Welcome to Moving Hawaii Forward, part of Think Tech Hawaii's series dedicated to traffic and transportation issues. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. Today, we look at the subject of soaring out of control costs for the rail and recent news about Kirk Caldwell attempting to entice the state of Hawaii to permanently extend the half percent excise tax. Also, we want to look at efforts of the Honolulu Transit Task Force this group of dedicated architects and planners say there may be a far less costly way to complete the rail alignment from Middle Street to Ala Moana. Cost savings range from $2.9 billion to $4.2 billion. Currently, Hart is overestimated in its budget by $3 billion, and the Federal Transportation Administration is breathing down the city's neck, wanting to know by April how this gap of $3 billion is going to be shored up. At stake is the Fed's commitment to fund the rail project, $1.55 billion. With me today to discuss this and much more is Scott Wilson, representing the Honolulu Transit Task Force. Scott, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Tim. And in I'm glad to be here. In lieu of all the news in the newspaper about this issue, yes. uh, timing is perfect for you to show up and talk about... It is. Um, in today's paper, there was talk about the rail tax and two boats happened already in the legislature, so we, we are right in the middle of it right now. We are right in the thick of it, as they yep. say. Yep. So tell me about your group. Tell me about Honolulu Transit Task Force. Tell me about your mission and goals, and we'll go from there. Okay. Well, really, uh, uh, we are a group of architects and planners that were originally uh, were part of AIA Honolulu. AIA is the local Honolulu chapter of American Institute of Architects. We we have been looking since 2007 at ways in which transit options, uh, rail transit, could be planned in Honolulu. And so, in 2009. We came out with a report, it was about 30 pages long, and we gave it to the city council and the mayor and said, we really think light rail is the way to go for Honolulu. It could, it could be built at a fraction of the cost. So that report and two others similar to that were ignored by the city and they pressed ahead with their elevated rail. So as recently as December of last year, we, we were still part of AIA and we had a new plan to basically modify what's been built already so that it could come down on the street level. That, at that point, the AIA Honolulu decided, you know what, we've, we've said enough about this as an organization, we're not gonna take a position, so you guys are gonna have to go independent if you wanna continue. So we, re we retitled ourselves, we're the same people that we've been since 2007. Let me interject a question right there. The main reason your group split apart is because of political reasons? Was it uncomfortable? Are we that small town that we don't want to talk about these things? Right. We're a small town, and, and, there, and sometimes it's awkward to be confrontational even with people that you work with all the time uh, it, to, take a, to take a contrary position. Obviously, this, uh, the mayor was reelected recently, and uh, the AIA, we have a lot of members who have contracts with the city and mm -hmm. the federal government. Okay. So it was a political decision. So it's where, your, where your bread is buttered. Yeah. Okay. So you're having the courage, and your group is having the courage to say, we know where our bread is buttered, mm -hmm. but we have to do this anyway for yeah. the good of the public. It, it's, a, it's been the same position we've taken since back since 1992, actually, when Mayor Fossey first proposed elevated rail in Honolulu. We, we were doing hand drawings back in those days. There were no computers, but we were drawing hand drawings and saying, oh my gosh, this is, a, this is not a good thing for our harbor. We gave that to the mayor. Obviously, Mayor Fossey's plan never went ahead, but we did the same thing with Mayor Hanneman and Mayor Caldwell. Uh, we continue to feel that this elevated rail is, is really harmful for our city. And now we've got additional ammunition. It, we are wildly over budget because all of our predictions about cost have actually come true Super and tricky. gone even beyond what we expected. So in your, when you were talking about your, your group and what you've been up to, yeah. Early on, you guys said your your reports were being ignored by the um, Hanneman administration. Right. And that's where we're at. Right. And then it got inherited to Mayor Caldwell. Caldwell. He, he has made it his political career. His legacy is to produce elevated rail. Now he's in, a, he's in deep hot water because the, the, the costs are just completely out of control. And there's absolutely no one's even venturing what it would cost to complete this to uh, Almoana. And, and our, our report is saying, even more importantly, what is the cost to take it to UH? Because we all agree that the UH should be part of any kind of a transit system. And 
when we actually looked at the, 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 the current heart plan, it dead ends into a canyon 60 feet tall, a dead end at, on Kona Street, and literally there is no way to take this on to UH. So it is a, you have to back up two streets to, to Pensacola and then come up with a ramp that goes up to 90 feet. So you are talking just unbelievable engineering efforts and costs just to take it to UH, which is where it should have gone all along. Well, let's take a look at some um, some slides here of what your folks are proposing okay. to get off the elevated part of this rail system right. and go get back onto the street. Okay. Bring it back down to earth. Yep. Let's take a look at that. Well, let's look first. These are all uh, simulations from the city. This is this slide is at HCC. So, continuing from Middle Street, there's a stop in Kapalama, and then the uh, Iwile, or sorry, Kalihi, and then this is called the Kapalama stop at, at HCC. So, this is on Dillingham. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was produced by the city. This is further on uh, as you get into downtown. This is a shot of the guideway, uh, kind of near Bethel Street. Uh, you can see Aloha Tower in the in the distance. This thing is mammoth. How, yeah. uh, Scott, how high is that's this about up thirty there? five feet off of off of the ground, and it's about it's about. 25 feet wide as a guideway, just just the guideway, no, not looking at the stations yet. You know, it's interesting, I'm gonna just throw in an interjection here, and that is the city of Seattle has approved and spent billions of dollars to get rid of their viaduct. Now, granted, this viaduct carried 100,000 cars every day, mm -hmm. yet we spent billions of dollars trying to open up from the downtown to our waterfront. And here we are in Honolulu, <laughs> spending billions of dollars to raise an obstruction we are, that is going to block us off from the We are creating future history in which we end up tearing down a giant infrastructure just like the Embarcadero Freeway in San Francisco, just like the viaduct in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So, Sorry, I had to get that off my chest we're, when we're, I see we're this. We're getting this horrible deja vu that in 50 years we're going to go, oh my goodness, why did we build this colossal uh, elevated structure right at our waterfront? Yeah, you, you say deja vu, I say Groundhog Day, but it's okay, we both both on the same page. And, that, and there, here's a better view, here's what we're really more objecting to are the stations that have to be right by the water. The, this is the projected Chinatown station at Kekaulike Street. So it's not just a, a, a guideway that we're worried about, it's actually these colossal stations and, that are... Is, is this an architect's render because this looks like yeah. a mammoth Empire Strikes Back uh, spaceship. Does. It looks like a spaceship has landed in Chinatown, and 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 all of the scale of the small buildings and the and the views out of Chinatown to the water are completely disrupted by this 240 foot long concrete structure, which has got to be supported on pylons and has to have escalators and elevators. This and does require an elevator for ADA. Oh Is that yeah, correct? absolutely. Uh, I hope it doesn't break down because elevators in our tropical environment that are standalone tend to break down, and as do escalators. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is part of the operating and maintenance cost that's going to be... Is that be, part of the, the reason the humidity and salinity in the air? Is yeah, that the, you're, look at the salt water. The salt right water there. is literally 30 feet away from all, those, all that equipment. Right. So that's that's we think is unfortunate. So we were going to look at some other. I think we're going to look at some other line. There we go. This is another. This was again produced by the city. This is showing the guideway as it gets near um, Fort Street Mall, and you're looking to the station. You see it in the distance there. You can see the Dillingham Transportation Building yep. on the left. You can see a station, but it's very far away. I think if you look at our next shot, it's a little closer in. Right. Now you can see the station a little more clearly. It, it, it's supposed to go right into the plaza between Dillingham Transportation Building and the Pacific. I, I've noticed Guardian. a little graffiti. There's, th is that just for fodder? or? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we decided to be. Because <laughs> there's going to be was, some, right? This was our simulation, so we had to be realistic. <laughs> okay. We had to put a little graffiti because with all that concrete, Concrete there, it's uh, it's impossible to imagine it not getting a little now, bit of tags. In all the city's planners' great wisdoms, they always say, "Well, we we paint the columns with murals. The graffiti tag artists will respect that, and they mm. won't dare dare oh, put yeah. any graffiti on these things." Well, I haven't seen that ideal city yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nor have I. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Um, mm -hmm. When this was first rolled out uh, years and years ago, were there? renderings or drawings that kind of didn't show the, real, the reality of these gargantuan columns and, and rail stations? Were there renderings showing it more of a 
soft and subtle uh, alignment? And the, well, what we notice is that the city's renderings, they would show it from about a half a mile away uh, and just the guideway. So mm -hmm. that's what was really consistent in their whole PR campaign was okay. Let's show this. Let's show this thing from a distance. Uh, let's let's show it uh, from three or four blocks away. Mm -hmm. We won't show any stations. We're only going to show the guideway. So it looks pretty harmless. It's just in these little, you know, cute little poles are there, and little guideway. Are there any photos in the archives for us to compare in the future here? The ones that we just saw, uh -huh. uh, and if you look at the, the additional ones that we were just talking okay. about, the ones in Kakaako. Now, this is this is pretty huge, I would say. This is the one proposed at Mother Waldron Park. Mother Waldron Park is right on the left where that tree is. As you can see, this huge guideway, uh, because it's right in the middle of the road and you can't put a post in the middle of the road, they've had to put this giant bent, uh, straddle bent uh, structure with posts on either side. But you can see, this is pretty disruptive. Imagine those people living in that housing uh, building, and that's an existing building on the right. They suddenly have an enormous uh, concrete wall right in front of their window, and there's going to be a train on steel wheels rattling by there. Uh, for there went the valuation of that poor building. Yeah. All right. Well, looking at all that concrete, what I see is um, the basis of a lot of cost. Yeah, I I see. Uh, and, and I see the construction in the union. I mean, it's good for the union. And the, and the it's good for contractors. Busy, and they've got at least ten years of work, solid yeah. work. I mean, that's solid that's work. great. That's not part yeah. of the hundred thousand jobs that Mayor Hanneman had promised. No, we we're talking about permanent type jobs. Fortunately, no. It, yeah. Uh, it, Which, by the way, we're only about nine hundred and some odd yeah. jobs that have been really created on a permanent basis. Most of the jobs have, in fact, gone to out of state workers because it's very complex work, and they. There's been no similar project in Hawaii. Yeah. So all of these local contractors that were hoping to get work have really not, not seen it. They're, they're all busy anyway because we're, we're in a boom. Well, isn't that anyway. the myth, though? That's why we get the public all excited about this concept because yeah. we're going to have 100,000 new jobs. Yeah. And people assume, oh, 100,000 local jobs. Yeah. No. They're not local jobs. So, so the, the whole reason we're doing rail, first it was going to be about traffic. But then for some reason, when they studied it, they discovered that almost no traffic was going to be taken. So then they changed it to jobs. And they said, oh, yeah, it's, this is about jobs. Well, we discovered there's not very many jobs or they're out-of-state jobs. So now we're on to TOD and housing. So now that's the reason we're doing rail. And affordable housing. And affordable housing. Yeah. That's the mantra that everybody's putting out. And of course, contractors are all happy because they're thinking, oh, I can build housing at least. I couldn't build the rail, but maybe I can build housing. So. So as Sounds like a three-card three card Monty. Yeah, uh, it's like which shell are we supposed to look under now, right? Right. You know, it's not about traffic. Oh, oh, and it's not about jobs. Oh, oh, now it's about TOD. Yeah. How convenient. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, it, maybe when we take apart TOD, there's going to be another one. I, I got to think about my next my next re excuse for rail. There you go. Well. Since I see all this concrete, I see in my eyes and the public sees the same eyes, mm -hmm. uh, cost and expense and, and overruns. So let's yeah. talk about budget. Um, I have a, a shot up here that I want to put up, and it shows the costs from about 2006. There we go. So here we are. 2006, we had an estimation of about $4.6 billion from start to Ala Moana. Right. And then at that time, FTA says, okay, hey, these are reasonable. We're going to commit $1.55 billion and to get you from our portion of contribution for this rail, uh, pr this project. And with that, we had a half a percent of the general excise tax, and that was approved for 15 years from 2007 to th 2022. Now we fast forward four years. Oh, we've gone for $4.6 billion up to $5.4 billion. Oopsie doodle. Okay, let's let's go a little bit further than that. Let's ex accelerate four more years. Oh, look at this. 2014, $6.5 billion. Oopsie doodle. And then in 2015, the state legislator says, okay, we're going to extend the get another five years. We don't want to, but we can see that we're in a cash crunch here. We don't have enough money in the budget to get to where we need to go. Mm -hmm. And so lo and behold, we have an extension now to 2027. And then, uh-oh, September 2016, we've gone up to $8.6 billion, 
as our best uh, ceiling cost. I think that's the ceiling cost mm -hmm. with financing. I think financing is included in that. That's true. And then two months later, oh my goodness sakes alive, we've gone up to 9.5 billion. And that's last year. We're now in 2017. I just can't wait to see what new numbers are await us. So. Well, and now it's 10 billion. We, we've rounded it up. The mayor, the mayor has announced uh, that we should round it up. To he 10 must billion. love round numbers. Yeah, we. I think 10 billion is a pretty round number. Yeah. From okay. 4.6 now to 10 billion. Right. All righty. Well, let's talk about your group and the fact that you've come up with a plan, and we've seen. You know where these alignments are, are with this mm -hmm. this mammoth gargantuan elevated system you folks in your report have stated that if you can bring that rail down to street level down to earth yeah um the cost savings would be what the cost savings would be at least three billion and more and more three to four billion at least and that's because when you bring the, the the rail down to street level, you're saving almost 400 million per mile. Because right now, uh, as we get in beyond Middle Street, we're getting into our urban center, and the cost the cost per mile for elevator are going to be between 400 and 500 million per mile. Per mile. Let's hold that thought. We're going to take a break. I'm Tim Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward, and we will be right back. Thank you. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you excited about my new show, which is called Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. And it's going to be on Think Tech Hawaii from downtown Honolulu on Tuesday afternoons, 5 p.m. And we're going to talk about uh, to make architecture more inclusive on the islands, which is, what, which is one of the definitions of humane, which is being tolerant of uh, you know, many people, of nature, of many other influences. So we're going to have some great guests, like today's guest, for example, uh, my collaborator, David Rockwood, who is the author of the awesome um, manifestation of uh, humane architecture in the background. So see you on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. I look forward to. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Our facts. Welcome back. This is Tim Apicell. I'm your host. We're moving Hawaii forward. I'm here with Scott Wilson. And we're talking about um, taking the elevated rail system back down to earth, down to ground, and saving anywhere from $2.9 billion to $4.2 billion. And Scott, thank you for sharing your, your thoughts and wisdom. Yes. Um, before the commercial break, we uh, were talking about cost and how much your group uh, plans to save. And I'd like to hear that again. Well, yeah, uh, thank you uh, for um, asking, asking again. What it, what it involves is, is that we've discovered that the, the unique construction of elevated rail and the elevated stations, because it's never been done before, uh, it poses a huge problem in Hawaii. We have very limited uh, workers who, who've done this, and we have very unusual mm -hmm. geological conditions. As we, as we move from Middle Street into down, downtown and especially to the harbor, we're getting into totally unforeseen geological conditions because our harbor area, everywhere, everything uh, ocean side of Richard Street was actually filled. So where those pictures that we saw of the guideway going down Nimitz Highway, that is all on filled land. So the, yep. the standard way of boring a hole in the ground and filling it with concrete is not, not going to work. Not we're, applicable. We, if you look at all of the, the high rises that were built in downtown in that ocean area, they were, they were literally built on boats of concrete. They, they, the entire footprint of the building has an enormous 10 foot thick concrete pad under it. So it is just floating because mm -hmm. there is no rock to build on. This is not Manhattan. So, okay. so so those, those um, posts that you see holding up the rail, those actually have to go down into a big spread footing. Well, this, and, that, and that may be 30 this, feet by 30 feet. This leads me to a really important point of the report that you folks put out, and that is um, in the first one-third of the alignment, uh, there was a 76% cost overrun in that first third section. Mm -hmm. So your report, and correct me if I'm wrong, basically says if we take that simple logic and we say there's two thirds left, that would be 76 and 76 and 76%, a total of 228% cost overrun. Right. But the point being made in your report was, hey, 
the first third was the easy part. You just alluded to the fact that when we get close to the waterfront, we've got extra pads to put in, we have uh, utilities to contend with, we have businesses that are gonna be interrupted and there has to be some kind of mitigation for the businesses. Mm -hmm. So your cost estimate of overrun is that rather actually simplistic. Um, it could be a lot higher than the 76%. Yeah. I, I tried to be conservative. I, I can just, see that. But I just tried to say, frankly, right now the, the project is only one-third finished because we have no stations built and we have about 10 miles. So if you, if you adjust the little, those, you come up with about a 30% completion. So, and we've had, as I said, a 76% rise. So obviously from 4.6 billion to 10 billion is the overall price. So they're, they're projecting almost a hundred percent increase in price, but we're saying it's actually gonna be more. So, and, and as I said, there are multiple conditions in the downtown area and the urban core, which they haven't even begun to deal with, that, that they've, had, they've had very easy construction out in agricultural land and even the land in Pearl City, Waipahu, they're in the middle of a. They're in the middle of an existing highway, and they're well inland from any kind of uh, shoreline. So, so this was the easy part. This was the easy part. And they still had problems. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Um, Parson Brickerhoff. They were one of the consultants on this project. Right. Parson Brickerhoff is nationally well known. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. They um, did work on the Big Dig back in Boston, and um, they were the last ones to do the really the last bit of consulting for the last elevation rail project here in this country, I believe. And with that project, they were 80% off cost, and they were 74.9% off on the ridership estimations. Are we talking about Miami? I believe so. We're talking, yes, yeah. I was going to say, uh, a, the only other existing elevated rail system in, in an urban center is Miami. Yeah. And that was done in the 80s. Right. And they were that far off on cost, yeah. and they were that far off on ridership, which leads me to the point that they were brought in to consult on this project. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, but the city and county of Honolulu is still retaining their estimations. They, they are. They Parsons, are. Parsons Brinkerhoff is still in charge of this project. They are doing the design drawings for the final segment. Uh, okay, I only bring that up as a, a footnote, I guess, at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah. Um, they uh, estimated the ridership maybe about 119,000, but anywhere in any city where there's rail, with there's light rail component or even an elevated um, mm -hmm. guideway, um, maybe at best, be it Seattle or I don't know if it's Portland's part of that, but most cities have about a, a 38,000 weekly ridership. Yeah. And the projection, I think, has um, been stated as high as 119,000. I know. Are those ridership numbers accurate? Are they? I think they're, they're wildly inflated. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is, this is standard practice uh, uh, with all these big infrastructure projects. They, they lowball the cost and they highball the ridership. So they're trying to make this thing look useful and, and, and uh, needed. Right. Well, if we look there, at... There is an additional project in, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, which was uh, also done by Parsons Brinkerhoff. It was done in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk about it maybe because it's, San Juan is not, an, a, not a state. But, right. but nevertheless, uh, that is actually the project closest to Honolulu because they, they tried to run it through the center of the city and it was too, too difficult because of uh, proximity of buildings. So they ran it around the side of the downtown the ridership okay. ended up being 25% of original projection. Okay. I want to get into an article that appeared in front of the Star Advertiser here recently, and Mayor Kirk Caldwell called your report or your, your plans to reduce costs and bring the, uh, the rail down to, down to earth, down to the street level, as wishful thinking. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, but um, as the mayor moves forward with the state and tries to persuade them, I don't know if persuade is the right word, uh, in my world it's almost bribery of trying to increase the split of the excise tax from the current 90%, 10% split, and now that, that proposal may be 80-20 or even high as 75-25%. Right. And um, I don't know if that's wishful thinking. Maybe he'll be successful, but mm -hmm. he seems to be rather desperate in trying to convince the state mm -hmm. to extend this excise tax into perpetuity. Yeah. Um, you have someone on your, your, 
on your team, mm -hmm. Douglas Tilden. That's correct. He was mm -hmm. one of the major authors of this report. Yes. What specifically did they have an issue with this report? Uh, no, Douglas Tillman was one of our primary technical right. advisors. Right. Uh, so he fully supports it. In fact, no, I know. But uh, when I say they, I meant yeah. Hart and the mayor's office. That's that's actually a very good point. We are still waiting for a serious response to our proposal. I think we are due. We are due. Uh, what we're trying to do is raise a level of discussion in the city about alternatives and. So far, we've gotten just very casual, almost laughable responses to our report. They're, laughable. They, they have said things like, well, if you put in light rail, you're going to have to build a trench seven feet deep and 30 feet wide. And as you can see from that picture right there uh, behind us, that the, the, track, the track for a train on the ground on the, is 14 inches deep and it's eight feet wide. Okay. So, so all of this, this scare tactics about giant trenches and disturbing all of the human remains is, is okay. a smoke screen. Okay, let's talk about wishful thinking. Um, I'm gonna pull up a screen here because the legislature right now is, is trying to entertain and grapple with Mayor Caldwell's request to extend this excise tax. So can we see the first one? Uh, this was quoted a few days ago. I think we're having a harder time than two years ago, and it's based on the fact that there's no trust. The numbers given have changed dramatically. I think so. Next one, please. Uh, the House Majority Leader, Scott Sakai. What exactly do they mean by a split? Um, I think they know what a split is. <laughs> I just think they're having a hard time contending with what the mayor is really saying. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's a 90-10 split. Yeah. Um, this is the one that really uh, is an eye-opener. I think there are a lot of questions. Some members probably feel they can't rely on the answers that are being provided given past representations w that were made to the legislature. Excuse me, we missed a word there. And that was uh, printed in the Star Advertiser, two thousand uh, February 1st. Uh, this is one more example of where we are with the legislature in trying to grapple with um, Mayor Caldwell's request. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll read it here. And it, well, that's fine. So here we are, we have a, cred a credibility problem. We have, mm. we have a situation where your report's being taken to task yet all the numbers from all the years seems to be washed away and, and merely forgotten. Do you have a comment about that? Yeah, I, I just think um, uh, at this point, um, the mayor, the mayor and, and Hart really have to have a serious discussion on how they propose to finish this project because it's, they, they have not addressed how they would extend it to UH. They, they have simply gone to this this fallback position of let's just extend the GET tax for indefinitely and that way we can afford all kinds of things down the road. Well, that basically will mortgage and, and suck up all possible tax revenues for the state for any kind of uh, projects or uses or needs for from now until the foreseeable future. Yeah. Randy Roth, who's an attorney, is a professor at the law school, um, s estimated that by the beginning to the end, of this project, with the increase of all the taxes and the accumulated taxes, a family of five will be paying about twenty-five thousand dollars of the life of the project, mm -hmm. and yeah. and that's a tax we don't see every time we go to the store. It's yeah. it's embedded. It's it's embedded in our uh, for everything we pay for, um, yeah. real estate, cars, everything, and so I, if if the taxpayer truly knew the cost that they were going to be spending on an elevated rail project. I would think there would be pitchforks and torches out in the streets, yeah. but I don't think they understand that. And I'm hoping yeah. your group can illustrate that a little bit better and a little bit more um, and then show the advantage of what you're trying to do and trying to save this project and trying to get the cost to the tax taxpayer significantly reduced. Yeah, we, we are just trying to have a serious discussion with the mayor about options because we recognize that, that 15 miles of this will be built. It will be built in Middle Street. So there, you're going to have your fast transit time all the way to Middle Street. From Middle Street coming down to grade, it will be slightly slower. We calculate only three minutes slower. So, and for three minutes, we will save three to four billion dollars. So that's about a billion dollars a minute. per minute. Is it worth it? Yeah, I, I, I just think that we have so many other needs in this state for it.
preparing schools or with preparing our roads or our sewers, we've got to be more pragmatic with our tax dollars.